intensive medical issues, right, that might pose a safety risk, for example, seizures. Are those also not protective supervision? Okay. You cannot what you cannot um get protective supervision to watch for spontaneous medical emergencies um seizures are one of those things there have been some cases where a person would have seizures and then they would become cognitively impaired and potentially wander off and there have been some cases like that where there was a basis for protective supervision but you cannot that's really specific case like you you generally cannot get protective supervision to monitor for spontaneous medical emergencies. The one exception to that is if the, the medical emergency is being caused by the person's cognitive impact. So for example, um, if a child has a port um, or if they have a trach, if they have a G-tube and they're constantly yanking at it or tripping over it or pulling it out because they don't understand what it is, they don't understand it's not a toy, they don't understand what will happen if they pull it out and it's this is a life-sustaining device that can be a basis for protective supervision because the child doesn't understand the consequences of disrupting this life-sustaining equipment um, that needs to stay connected to them and the reason for them disconnecting it and potentially harming themselves um, is because they don't understand the consequences of their actions.